Hi, I'm Graham Mossman from Exasol, and today I'm going to be talking about natural language processing on Exasolution. There has been a lot of talk about how you can extract value from the natural language data that's available in your database. This kind of data can be found in Twitter and other social media sources, and also in the comments fields uh, that you have in uh, fault logs and uh, in various other customer interactions. This type of data is not what SQL is good at analysing, so we will need to extend SQL with another feature we XSOL call User Defined Functions or UDFs. On ExaSolution, these UDFs can be written in Python, which I will demonstrate today, but also in Java, R and Lua. I'm going to take a very special kind of language. I'm going to take the lyrics of the rapper Jay-Z. Uh, one of the good things about this is that it is very messed up language. It's not the Queen's English and it isn't in a convenient format. And the other good thing is that we actually know the intended meaning because we have his book decoded, which actually tells you, for example, that the villain of 99 Problems is a literal female dog. Um, other people have made uh, other uh, understanding of those lyrics, and uh, it's just one example of how human language is so complex that even humans can get it wrong and you wonder what chance does a computer program have of extracting meaning from this kind of messed up language. To add the features necessary to analyse natural language, we have to add some Python libraries to ExaSolution. We then load the source text into a database table and write some UDFs using these Python libraries. The process would be to filter the data to take out uh, anything you don't want to analyse, to tokenize it, which is to split it into words, and then to implement some linguistic functions. I'm going to be using the examples of tagging, where you find the part of speech of each particular word, and stemming, which is to group together words that belong to a common stem. For example, with call, we have call, calls, calling, called and so on. And then once you've written those UDFs you can use them in SQL. Here is the final result of my, my attempt to tag and stem the data that's come from Jay-Z's lyrics. I've done a query here that looks for all words that have the stem of call and I've looked at what part of speech they belong to and then done a group by to get a word count. So from this I can see that Jay-Z uses call a lot more than called uh, and a lot more than calls which kind of indicates that he uh, speaks a lot in the present and future tense and uh, speaks a lot in the first and second person. Here is my user defined function, which is the basis of this kind of analysis. Uh, the bit in red at the top is just a header, just to say that it's going to take in a varchar 10,000 called lyric, which is a piece of lyrics, and it's going to emit a word, a tag name, and a stem. Uh, the bit in green is the NLTK natural language toolkit which is the important library I'm importing for Python and from that NLTK I'm going to use pos underscore tag to define the part of speech. I'm going to use word underscore tokenize to split things into words and I'm going to call a particular stemmer called snowball with the English option uh, to decide whether a particular word belongs to a particular stem. The part there in blue is just a loop which loops around all of the data that's given to it and the bit in black does all of the work. So all it does is break the text down into words, put a tag on them depending on the part of speech and then for each word uh, to work out which stem the, the word belongs to and then emit the word, the tag and the stem. I actually create a simple view to wrap around this UDF. 
I just uh, create view as select tag and stems, which is the UDF, open brackets, lyric, close brackets from lyrics. So all of that does is just do the UDF on every lyric in my lyrics table. This makes it easier to use in the SQL and hide some of the complexity. You can see on the right hand of the screen there that we have a little uh, piece of SQL and what I'm doing there is looking at every word that is a superlative. So where as a tag name of JJS and you can see that uh, Jay-Z uses best uh, an enormous amount and uses worse slightly less. There are also some pretty strange superlatives in there like est, hollerest, vest, which is actually a misprint and uh, we can look at this in more detail in the next slide. Yes, some strange words were defined as superlatives. Est is actually coming from a little piece of French. The UDF is defined expecting to find English and when it finds French you get some strange results. With the sentence hustlers we don't sleep we rest one eye up the absence of a comma between sleep and we has confused it. If you put the comma in there then rest is correctly uh, found to be a verb. Just an indication that this kind of analysis is so sensitive that the lack of a comma or presence of a comma can make such a difference. And the word hollerest, which I think he made up, uh, it seems to be a noun, but uh, some reason the tagger has tagged it as a superlative just because it ends in EST, I guess. I've shown you tagging and stemming. But natural language processing can go a lot further than that when analysing a piece of text. It can look at sentiment analysis, which is a particularly sexy subject in terms of Twitter. You can actually look at the Twitter comments and decide whether they're positive, negative or neutral about your product and uh, make some kind of assumption about how well it's being received. Automatic summarization would take a large piece of text and turn it into a smaller piece of text. Uh, relationship extraction looks for the key players in a particular piece of text and point out the relationship between them. Automated translation would be to the kind of thing that Google Translate does, take it from English and translate it into German for example. And plagiarism checking is a common uh, subject where you find out whether a piece of text is remarkably similar to another piece of text that's previously been written. These further steps usually require machine learning and that's a whole different video which I may get round to one day. In conclusion, natural language processing is possible in ExaSolution. You just import the necessary libraries, you build UDFs and then you use them in SQL. This is just one example of how SQL can be extended to do pretty much anything you fancy. This tutorial was run on the free community edition of ExaSolution and you can download it from exasol.com community and any questions you have please uh, send them at the same address. Thank you for your attention. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.